Hi, I'm David Hostler. In this video, we're going to talk about two really important issues. We're going to talk about grounding and shielding and how they work together. You can learn a lot in this particular segment about how to have a successful gig, how to get rid of noise, and how to keep yourself safe from electrical shock. So here we go. When you're plugged in properly, you not only have good power, but you also have access to a solid ground. This plug right here has three blades on it, and this would be similar to what you'd see coming out of the back of your amplifier, PA system, or other devices. There's two flat blades and a round blade on the bottom. The one on the bottom is the ground lug. Now when you plug into the wall, typically you'll see this, and this will be where the ground goes. However, in some situations, you may come across this. Now this doesn't mean ground is not necessary, it means it'll require a different solution, both for safety and for shielding. And we're going to talk about the tools you need to make that connection. When you plug your cord into a wall outlet, an AC wall outlet, basically what is happening is this ground pin is plugging in to this socket. Now behind this socket there's actually a wire that runs through the building and eventually outside and is tapped into what's called a ground stake. So when we're talking about ground, we literally are talking about the ground or earth. We're trying to make a clear path from here through the building to the ground outside. Now, in some circumstances, you're going to come across plugs like this. Well, what do you do? What you don't do is break this off your plug because at that point you no longer have a ground. You no longer have a safety for your amplifier and as we'll talk about later, a clear path for audio noise. What you can use is this particular adapter. Now for years, they looked like this. They had a green wire attached. And the reason that wire was attached was so the ground could still be obtained through this sort of outlet. The screw would be loosened, you'd attach that underneath, then plug it in, then plug your three prong into there. It still gave you a good connection with ground. The more modern version of it looks just like this. The same thing has to happen. The screw has to be pulled out, run through the little hole in there, and attached to ground. Now you still have a clear connection with ground outside. Your safety is intact, and you also have a path for audio noise, which is what we're going to explain now. What we're looking at here is the inside of an amplifier. Specifically, we're going to look at the AC power section and the power outlet. Now, on the other side of the panel is where this would typically plug in, and then the ground would have access to run out, again, through this ground pin. Here we see the hot and the cold, and we see the ground. If for some reason or another this ground is not connected or not available through this pin, should there be a short in the amplifier and it connects somewhere with this plate, if you were to come up and touch this plate, then the power would automatically want to ground itself through you. That's what we want to avoid. That's why this is important for a safety reason. We need ground so that if there's a short in the unit, it has a place to go other than through you. Having a good ground is also necessary for shielding to function on an audio device such as an amplifier or a guitar. Now this is a really misunderstood concept. Electric players for years have known about shielding, but still the application is a bit mysterious. I want to try and clarify that and clear up the whole issue of how it works and why it works. Shielding is not a barrier to something. For example, like an umbrella. When you walk out in the rain, you put your umbrella up, it may be shielding you from the rain, but shielding as we would use inside a guitar or on a cable doesn't function in the same way. Shielding needs a place to drain electrical in interference such as EMI or just noise that's circulating around the room. It needs a place to send it. So what actually happens is it collects those sorts of signals, runs them through your guitar, out the guitar jack via the shielding cable that's inside there, down into your amplifier, 
out your amplifier into the wall and out into the ground again. Now it's important to understand that this shielding does nothing unless it has a place to drain the noise. So you can really think of shielding more as a drain than a barrier that goes around something or prevents something from contacting something else. Shielding must be connected to ground to work. So I want to take a second and demonstrate that to you real clearly so you understand if your guitar has noise that's coming in from the outside, the first thing you want to make sure is that you actually have a clear ground so that that noise has a place to go. What you're looking at here is a real important tool for every musician. It's a ground fault tester or actually a circuit tester. These are available through Radio Shack or there's another version through Home Depot under five dollars. This should be in your bag at all times. It gives you the ability to check where you're plugged in for proper wiring and proper ground. These things are set up with a series of lights that'll tell you whether you have ground or not. Now this particular one I've got plugged in to the power strip. I have the amplifier and a PA system plugged into the power strip. And this light on over here tells me that I have a good ground connection. Now there's nothing plugged into the amplifier other than a cord. The cord is just hanging out here. I'm going to go ahead and turn up the amplifier just a little bit. And then I'm going to disconnect ground from this circuit. Now remember, there's no instruments plugged in. This is simply an amplifier with a cord hanging out. And what I've done is set it up over here and I'm going to disconnect the ground. Watch what happens. Audio noise. It's coming in through the cord into the amplifier and the amplifier has no place to send it. Now I'm going to reconnect the ground. It's quiet. At that point I've allowed the shielding in the amplifier and the cord to physically work. We're going to watch the ground fault tester right now and I'm going to connect and disconnect the ground. You'll watch the light go out and watch the noise come in. I want to show you what I was just doing so there's no mystery involved here. We had to eliminate ground from the circuit here so you understood that we actually had noise. The way we did it was we took our power cord here and we plugged it into a ground lift only we didn't connect the ground lift to the box. In other words I didn't put the screw through the adapter and make connection with this box which is actually connected to ground outside. I did it rather by taking a wire with some alligator clips so that I could clip on and off of the ground connecting and disconnecting the ground. So now I'm going to actually disconnect it and you'll see what's happening. You can imagine if the screw was through here it would be connecting with the plate but since it's not there we're just doing it manually. Notice again how the audio noise completely disappears by giving it a destination. So the shielding in the amplifier is working, the shielding in the cord is working, but it needs a place to go. What I want to do is just take a second and hook it up normally again so that you can see what's actually occurring. First I'm going to disconnect the ground, unplug the amplifier, and just plug it in normally. The noise is gone. Now the reason the noise is gone is because the shielding in the amplifier and in the cord now has a destination and that's the earth or ground. So again what we see is we have two reasons for a good connection to ground. First is safety but the second is the destination for audio noise.